Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Casey Smith and I'm a realtor in the Middle Georgia area. And today I'm gonna be discussing with you some real estate vocabulary. So to kind of give you an idea of some of those terms you're gonna start seeing thrown around as you move into the buying and selling process. All right, let's get started. Okay, so our first term is gonna be agency. And you'll hear this one a lot. It's really kind of what type of relationship you have with your real estate agent and how they're representing you. So whether or not that you're their client or their customer and so forth. So that is really gonna be what that is. Agency is the type of representation that you are having with your agent. All right, next. Okay, our next term is gonna be a buyer's broker or a buyer's agent. So this is gonna be the agent that represents the buyer in any transaction. So if you're the buyer and it's your real estate agent, that is your real estate agent and whether or not they're representing you, that agent is typically paid by the seller's uh, listing agreement rather than by the buyer, but they still represent the buyer. Okay, our next term is gonna be a CMA or a comparable market analysis or a customer market analysis. But this is the analysis that's gonna give you the price that we can see the market can withstand for your home. So the agent will usually go in and they're gonna pull previous listings and find comps that fit the home. And that way they can come up with the best market price for your home. So it's a comparable market analysis or a CMA. Our next term is gonna be comps. And you'll hear comps quite a bit when you're doing like the CMA or the comparable market analysis. So comps are gonna be comparable homes that have sold, comparable properties that have sold in the area. So those will be your comps. Okay, next up is the debt to income ratio. And you'll hear this a lot when you're discussing your loan and talking to your mortgage lender, but it'll also come up sometimes when you're speaking to your realtor. And this is going to be your monthly income versus your monthly debt. So your debt to income ratio, and that can affect what you can be approved for loan wise. And it can also affect whether or not you can be approved for some rental properties. So it's important to know and keep a good balance on your debt to income ratio. Okay, our next term is gonna be disclosure. So disclosure is gonna be verbal or written communication regarding agency, uh, property condition, things like that. The one you'll notice the most is probably gonna be your property disclosure, and that will come from the seller to tell you the condition or if there are any hidden defects, different things about the home, age of the roof, uh, all of that. Then also you have to disclose the agency and who's representing who, so that'll be in the contract as well. So it'll say how each person's being, each side's being represented and so forth. So it's important to know what the disclosures say and how they affect you within a contract. Okay, so our next term is the down payment. Down payment is how much you have to put down for the purchase of the home with your mortgage. So depending on the type of loan you've got or what your approval is will depend. It's usually a percentage of the purchase price, so it's important to know what your down payment is. And that is very different from the closing cost. So you'll have closing costs and down payment that will be due at the time of closing. So it's important to know what your cash to close is and what the difference between those two things are. Next up is the earnest money. So earnest money is a good faith deposit whenever the buyer puts in an offer for the home. So that money is the money that goes into an escrow account and is held there until the closing date to which that money is taken to closing. So it can vary and it may depend. It's negotiable within the contract typically. So it's important to have an idea of how you would like to negotiate that and discuss the earnest money with your realtor. Next up, we have escrow. So this is gonna be escrow that is attached to your loan rather than the escrow that earnest money and things are going into. So this is gonna be your escrow account after the purchase. And that is a reserves account to which all of the money for your homeowner's insurance and your taxes will go into throughout the year and then they'll be paid directly out of that account. So it's your money that's being held in an escrow account to pay your homeowner's insurance and your property taxes every year. Okay, next up we have FHA. FHA is a type of loan. There are three really common types of loan, VA, FHA, and conventional. FHA is a government insured loan. So it's backed by the government and that's, um, it's kind of important to know what kind of loan you're getting. Okay, next up we have listing. So listing is kind of 
the property, how it's marketed. Um, it's, there's listing agreement. So the listing agreement is when a seller has signed an agreement to have their property publicly listed or publicly marketed by um, a realtor or real estate agent. And then as buyers, you'll start asking about different properties and your agent may say listing. So they're just pulling up all of the information and the marketing information on that property. So it's that listing, which has all of those details. Okay, next up we have lockbox. So some of you may have seen lockboxes when you go to um, things like Lowe's or Home Depot. They sell like the ones that have, uh, they have the different like combination codes and things. Most of us real estate agents and realtors now, we use what are called, ours are super lockboxes. So they're an electronic lockbox. They're much more secure. They have very limited access. You can um, limit the access to certain times. They can only be ex accessed via realtors and appraisers and things like that. So it'll always let keep track of who's been into the home or who's accessed the lockbox in order to go into the home and controls what times and so forth someone's able to go into the home. Okay, next up we have the loan to value ratio or the LTV. So the loan to value ratio is going to be your purchase price versus your down payment. So like, 80% is considered really the ideal loan to value ratio, your loan amount being 80% and your down payment being 20%. But there's a lot of varying um, amounts, it could be 90% loan, 10% down, 100% loan, just depends on what kind of loan you're getting, what your situation is. It's best to talk to your lender and kind of work out what the best is for you. But just so you know what's being discussed, loan to value ratio or LTV is the purchase price versus the loan amount. Okay, next up we'll have the mortgage insurance. So when you put less than 20% down as your down payment, most of the time you're gonna have a mortgage insurance that's gonna be built into your mortgage payment every month. So it will, it will charge you that in addition to the other charges that go into your mortgage, your principal, your interest, your homeowner's insurance, and your taxes. And there will also be the mortgage insurance. So it's important to know whether or not you have to have a mortgage insurance for your loan and if that's gonna be an additional cost to kind of insure that money when you haven't put near as much down. Okay, next up we have the MLS or the multiple listing service. And you may have heard me mention this before, but the MLS is where a group of different firms have all gone together and they've made an agreement to take the commission and share their commission amongst each other depending on who brings the buyer. So the listing side gets half and the buyer side gets half and we've prearranged those agreements. And then we put all the listings into the MLS and from the MLS, they're distributed to all of the websites, the marketing websites that you're used to seeing. You can look at them directly from the MLS or you can look at them via like Zillow or realtor.com or other um, Trulia different sites that also share different property listings. So all of the information is updated within our multiple listing services and then distributed to those websites. So the MLS is usually gonna have the most up-to-date information and then it's gonna distribute out from there. Okay, next up we have PITI. So P-I-T-I, PITI. So if you hear someone talking about your PITI, that is going to be your monthly mortgage payment to include your principal, your interest, uh, your insurances and your taxes, all of that payment. So Pity just is talking about your mortgage payment to include all of those things, the combination of all of those for your mortgage payment every month. Okay, next up we have MLS handout. So I've already kind of discussed what the MLS is and an MLS handout is just a handout that your realtor will print out so that you have easy access to the information. They could also email you the handout, but so you have easy access to the information on the property you're wanting to look at. Okay, next up we have the purchase and sell agreement. So the purchase and sell agreement is the contract. So it's got all the details about the contract, whether you're on the buying side or the selling side, it's got all the details, the purchase price, the earnest money, the closing costs being paid by the seller. It's all the details about the purchase of that property. So the purchase and sell agreement will first come up in the offer stage. Offers are submitted on a purchase and sell agreement and then they become a binding contract once we've got all parties signed. Okay, a, a rate lock is our next um, term. And a rate lock is important because you're only locked into your interest rate that you've agreed to with your lender. 
for a set amount of time. So it's important to know when your rate lock ends, especially when you're going through the whole purchase of a property, because if for some reason things get extended past the time of your rate lock, that means your interest rate could change. So it's important to know what you're locked in at interest rate wise and how long your rate lock is. Okay, last we have reserves. So reserves are the money you have available if you're buying a home. So whether it be savings accounts, IRAs, money markets, however you keep your money in different um, factors, the lender will usually wanna know what you have in reserves. It'll um, play a part in your financing and how how much you qualify for and interest rates and things like that. So it's important to know where you are financially and how much you have in reserves. Okay, so those are just a few terms to kind of get you started and hopefully we'll kind of get shine some light on some of the terms you've been hearing. But if you have questions with anything going on, if you're in the middle of the purchase or the sale of a home, don't be hesitant to ask your realtor or your lender what the different terms mean or what's going on. This is one of the biggest financial decisions that someone makes, so it's very important that you understand what's happening and you understand what's being discussed. So don't be hesitant to ask those questions and find out. Sometimes we just get a little bit ahead of ourselves and we forget what it was like not to know what these terms mean because we use them on a daily basis, but it does not make you any less intelligent or anything by not knowing. Ask the questions, be informed, and know what's happening. And if there's something you've heard and you have a question, let me know, I'm happy to answer. Or if there's something you'd like to see me do my next video on, I'd be happy to look into that. So, all right, well, thank you for joining me and please like and subscribe. All right, thanks, have a great day.